My last demo is to show how, to, how you can use the Spectrum server. Spectrum server is an optional component of Spectrum, so you can either use it or not. But the point of it is that it can collect some test execution statistics and based on that it can do some smart decisions like ordering the, the tests. Uh, and I can show you this in a quick example. And what I will do now, I will just take the, the default profile and let's say that I'm using only the non-web non -web scenario just for the sake of simplicity. Oh, yeah. Before I would go to the code, I actually wanted to show you with the, if you have installed Spectrum uh, with the NuGet package, then inside the tools where the Spectrum exists, there is a self server subfolder where the Spectrum, uh, Spectrum server is uh, actually sitting. And you can install the Spectrum server, or you can run the Spectrum server from here, right now from a console application. So it's cd Spectrum slash tools slash server and Spectrum server. You can say init database. I think I forgot that uh, last time, so it will just clean up my database fully. And I can just say start start and this will take the connection string from the configuration file and the port uh, so it was just uh, started and listening to and waiting for my tests to publish data so let's see how I can do that in the in the profile that was added by the NuGet package there is already a commented out uh, stuff for that it's very simple you just have to specify a server element and the server URL which is in my case local host and this is the standard port. And another setting is whether to publish results or not, so I just set it to true. So hopefully if I'm just running my tests from the default profile, if I don't specify anything, this will use the default profile. Da -da -dum. Okay. They are running. And what you can see is that actually it has published nine results, nine successful results. The server now collected this data and it also has a public OData API to access this result, so to, to enable tool integrations simply for, for uh, different tools. So actually you can query the data from standard browser. I'm not saying that this is something that I'm usually doing, but just to show you how uh, these OData queries can, can work with the, the Spectrum server. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the, in the full query syntax for OData, but actually what I'm doing here, I'm just filtering for my project ID and I'm just listing all uh, the tests which, have, which are in the shopping cart, so where the test path has the shopping cart in there. And as you see, this is a standard ATOM format uh, where you see the details of your, of your tests. Primary goal was not to read by a human but by a computer, so the, the, the interesting details are somehow uh, under the properties. But what you can see, for example, that you can see the last result of the test which was succeeded and there is also a cumulated state which is also taking into account the historical executions. So what you can see here is that we have a few success. We just, uh, I think we have just executed the test once. So this is not enough to have a, uh, to be a stable success. So it differentiates also for that. Okay. So that's, that was the, the collection of the data, but of course it, it's more interesting to use that data. As I mentioned, we can use this, uh, this uh, historical data for reordering the test in a smarter order, which means that the fa most failing one or the most new ones are coming first, which can help you to get feedback about the more problematic scenarios more quickly, so you can, you can react on them. So let's to, to have this, this reordering, I just changed the scheduling move to adaptive. Adaptive means that it just takes the, the historical data and uh, reorders it based on that. So I changed the, the, changed the test scheduling mode to adaptive. And to make this demo a little bit live, let's say that I have a mistake. So I have a, my application has, a, has an error. So let's try to run that. Yeah. What we will see, we will see some, some error. Okay, good. And actually, what, let's say that I, I think I have solved it. So let's say it's, I changed it to 42. 
Uh, and I want to quickly test whether my solution, my fix was really, really good or not. And the tests were collected, and the result, uh, based on the based on the historical result, it has prioritized it to the to the beginning. So I immediately see that my my fix was not really good. So I have to really work on it more and 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 fix it finally until it gets uh, again green. I hope that this is now good. Okay. And of course, this is also reflecting in the in the in the state. So, if I just open the page source, then you can see that uh, all the other tests are already stable success. Uh, however, my one is just uh, stays recovering, which means that yes, there was an error. Now it's get got green, but still we are not sure whether this is really solved or just this just, this was just a coincidence. So recovering means that we are in a good path to full success, but we are not yet there. Yeah, so this is how you can use the, the Scrum server for collecting the statistics and using them for, for smart uh, reordering. So this is the end of the, this, this fourth demo. So just to pick, very quickly wrap it up, so I was just showing how to how to start the Spectrum server, how to configure these profiles to publish data, and how to use these statistics for 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 smart reordering with this uh, adaptive uh, test scheduler.